What's up guys? Coming at you today with a quick holster build. Glock 48 it is going to be a vacuum rig. And as you can tell, I am bundled up. It is 30 degrees in the shop today. So I figured I'd do a quick build because I did not have the heater going. And let's jump right into it. All right, so again, this is a vacuum mold here. As you can see, it's basically a full mold, just split in half. And what we are going to do is take this 12 by 12 piece of Kydex, heat it up, slap it over, and sorry, that's my timer telling me the heat press is ready. Anyways, we're gonna put it in the heat press, pop it out, pop it here, seal it, and we're gonna go from there. It's pretty quick and easy. Vacuum is the way to go. It's gonna look something like this when it's all said and done. Super crisp, super clean, faster. It's the way to do it. So, I'll prep this. Just blowing it off here. Okay. That's in the t-shirt press. We're gonna give it uh, 90 seconds at 380 degrees. It's gonna come out perfect. I have my t-shirt press set exactly where it needs to be. It actually pops the Kydex out at about 370. You get about 380 and it's gonna torch the Kydex, but my t-shirt press runs a little cooler than what it says. So again, we're gonna give that about one more minute and I'll be back. So the Kydex is about ready in 10 seconds. What we're gonna do is pop these molds back on. I have them hitting, sitting on the t-shirt press so they actually heat up and are not cold to the touch. And then we are going to put the hot Kydex here, slam this over, and it is going to do some magic. You guys will see. So, again, pop the molds out, put them in place. All right, simple as that. So from here, what I'm gonna do is take another mold and basically trace out where the trigger is going to end in terms of your where your finger's gonna go. Now, I do have a trim jig for the 43, and this is a 43 mold here. As you can see, it's shorter than the 48. I won't be able to use the 43 trim jig in this case, otherwise it'll just be too short for the 48. So we're gonna do this the old school way, not a big deal. And then I actually have, I actually have another 48 holster, or sorry, mold here. And we're gonna trace just right along in front of the barrel. Okay, and I think what we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna come up something like that. And this holster is not getting a claw, so we're not gonna worry about adding that here like I normally do. But we're gonna come up over. We're gonna do about a medium sweat shield on this guy. Something right about there. And 
same thing here come up and just come over just like that and then I'm gonna take it out here see there it is it's cooled hard to touch I'm gonna take this to the bandsaw cut this out and I'll be back I'll show you how I fold it okay so I got it cut out we are about halfway done now what we are going to do is take our heat gun and heat up along the back side here the inside of the holster we'll do a couple passes on the front side but not a whole lot let me set up my other camera and I'll show you exactly how I do that So as I was setting up my other camera, I realized my tripod broke, but hey, I fixed it. Tape can fix anything. We're going to take our heat gun here with the duck bill because we want that heat to be dispersed at a point. What we're going to do is heat up here, probably, I don't know, 30 or so passes. So I want to get it to the point where I can flex it. We're right about there. I'll give it a few more passes. Okay, then we take our mold, bend it over, clamp it down here, and on the front side, and then I just usually pinch the back side with my hands. I will make sure the sight channel is down nice and tight. Now keep in mind this Kydex is going to be really hot. It's too hot to touch really, but I've been doing it enough. I have calluses on my hands. Cool it off with some air. All right, we are looking good. Got that folded over. Now we need to drill for the clip, do a little bit more cutting, and then we'll be basically done. Now, if I did have a trim jig for this setup, this would be a little bit faster. I'd be able to skip a few of these steps, but I don't, so we're gonna make do. So what I'm gonna do is put that in. This particular holster is getting a steel clip. So I'm gonna put that over, line it up, Right about there. Take my pencil here. Mark the holes, make sure they're straight. Okay, another thing I like to do is kind of mark where I can cut. So we'll grab a straight edge. We're gonna come down. this and we'll cut right on the outside of that and we'll call that good also I like to cut a little corner out of this off the top of the side channel just sometimes adds a little more comfort okay we'll cut this out and be right back All right, I went ahead and buffed the edges. As you can see, they are nice and ground down. There's no rough edges, no sharp points. And I just do that with a, with a buffing wheel. Next thing we're gonna do is drill out the marks we made. I went ahead and punched them. That way we can bolt the clip on and set our retention. Oh, grab our screws. We need two quarter inch female posts and another two three sixteenths female posts. We need two bushings and we need another set of bushings, but I'll have to open another package. 
All right, there. Got more bushings. So we are going to grab our screws here, install them into the clip. That's what these bushings are for. Because what we're going to do, and this is how I do my holsters. So I will actually lock the clip onto the front side of the kydex. That's why I have two sets of female posts here. I use the 3 sixteenths and I put them in the front side of the holster. And then I insert my bushings here. Now, matter of fact, I think, nope, these are the right size. Sorry, I thought they were the wrong size. It's here. Then I will start them by hand. Come on. And I'll show you why I do this. Okay, now as you can see, that will lock that clip in place with just the front side of the kydex. What that does is so your clip doesn't have a whole lot of movement in it. Because if you were to just put the post, the screw straight through and have posts only on the back side, this would be super wobbly. The holster would move around on you and it just wouldn't be right. So I like to do that. So then from here, it's basically normal, but your retention is going to be backwards, essentially. So typically you would adjust your retention from the, the fill-up side. Well, with my holsters, you're going to adjust the retention with the flathead back side. So from here, I just use an actual screwdriver. Sometimes it takes a bit to start them. I like to cut my bushings a little bit big so they make a nice big contact area, do their job. Alright, so we're going to take our mold, adjust the retention, that's actually, that's actually perfect. I'm not even going to move it. So you want to make sure that you are, if you don't have the real steel, you're going to test your molds with the real guns. Because you don't want to make a holster out of spec. Uh, that just sucks. But I have tested this with a real 43X, so we know what works. But yeah. There it is, guys. This might look a little bit different than what I normally make, and there's a reason behind that. This is kind of what I would normally put out my door. This particular build is actually just going to have Velcro on both sides. It's going to be for a purse carry. Uh, I don't advocate off-body carry, but I can't control what customers do. But this does have the option to swap it out to a clip if they want to change their mind. This one is actually a Christmas present for a relative, and he is not sure if he wants to carry small the back, side, appendix, 
Uh, designing it this way will allow me to basically swap it to a left-hand holster, just swap the clip around. It will allow me to attach a aftermarket claw for appendix carry. And we can even swap it out for a plastic claw, or sorry, plastic clip, excuse me. So tons of options here, and we're gonna see how he likes this and we'll go from there. Anyways, guys, that's about it. You gotta love the vacuum builds, super crisp. Nice detail on them. Foam's good too for custom projects, but man, a good vacuum mold gets the job done. Anyways, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Uh, let me know what you think about this, guys. Drop a comment. Drop a like. Thanks.